Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the to the session related to regional coupling and the role of the power exchanges in the southeastern Europe. Um, I hope that um, you will, uh, together with us, uh, help explore this uh, very interesting uh, subject. Uh, especially in a time when um, uh, certainly uh, the, the regional markets of uh, energy are in uh, already in some in some turmoil, and I hope that uh, we will be able to see together what is the role of uh, of regional exchanges in this new context and uh, how this. Um, uh, the future of a decarbonated um, Central and Eastern Europe can be supported by uh, the by the regional ex uh, power exchanges and um, uh, by the uh, power by the regional coupling of the markets. Without further ado, let me introduce you the speakers in uh, in this panel, Mr. Uh, George Ano who is a CEO of the Energy Exchange Group. Hello, George. Hello, Victor. Nice to see you again. Nice uh, to see you. Uh, Mr. I, I will introduce all the, all, all the speakers and then I will uh, kindly ask uh, um, each of you to, to introduce uh, your, um, uh, your presentation. So, Mr. Konstantin Konstantinov, who is the CEO of the Independent Bulgarian Energy Exchange. Uh, hello, Konstantin. Uh, good morning, Victor. Good morning to everybody. Good morning, uh, Mr. Milos Mladenovic, who is the Managing Director of CPEX. Hi, Victor. Hi, Konstantin, George. Hi. Nice to see you. Hello to all of you. Good to have you this morning. Thank you very much. And last but not least, uh, Mr. Sepin Yurus, who is the Development uh, Manager from the Commission Command for Exchange. Good morning, Sepin. Victor, good morning to everybody. Thank you very much for, uh, for, for, for all of you being present uh, this morning. I think we make a very interesting, uh, very interesting panel. We have these uh, opportunities to, to, to see a diverse range of uh, views from, uh, the, I think, the main markets in, in the region. And uh, we have together also uh, Central Eastern uh, Europe, but also the, the Western Balkans. So I, I think this really makes uh, a very, very interesting uh, uh, panel to discuss this, uh, this situation uh, where uh, the markets are in, in turmoil uh, and it seems to be uh, various calls from uh, policymakers uh, for various kinds of interventions. But I think um, uh, maybe contrary to the, uh, to the conventional belief, I think that power exchanges and energy exchanges in general they have uh, a very important role to play. And I'm sure that uh, uh, with the contribution of the speakers today, we are going to be able to convince you that actually we are part of the solution and uh, we are part of uh, the sustainable future of the energy market, uh, not only in the region, but in the European Union uh, as such. So without further ado, may I ask Mr. George Reno to make his presentation. Thank you. Uh, Victor, thank you <clears throat> very much uh, for the in introduction. Indeed, I believe that uh, power exchanges are in the center of all the developments that are taking place lately uh, concerning the, the evolution of, of uh, the prices and the, uh, the, the quantities and uh, uh, all, all, uh, all things that uh, relate to, to, to energy and uh, specifically electricity. So uh, let me just start uh, by giving you a brief uh, outline of uh, our company, Hennex. Hennex uh, uh, comprises of uh, two companies, uh, the Hellenic Energy Exchange, our group, two companies, the Hellenic Energy Exchange, which operates the spot and derivatives energy markets, uh, we are NEMO, a nominated electricity market operator for uh, spot uh, electricity market, and we are in progress for licensing as a trading platform operator for gas. On the other hand, we have a full subsidiary, 
which is NX Clear. It's a clearing house and uh, it deals with risk management, clearing and settlement of spot energy markets, the day ahead and the intraday markets. And also something that is, uh, I believe, quite unique uh, in the European uh, area, uh, the clearing and settlement of uh, positions in the balancing market for power, a market that is operated by ADMIE, the IPTO. And uh, in terms of uh, as shareholders, I believe we have a very interesting scheme where uh, uh, all uh, the uh, necessary actors in order to make the market work participate in, uh, in our group. As you can see, we have uh, the IPTO who controls uh, all uh, the electricity network. We have Vespa, which is the company that has the gas uh, network. We have the PEP, which is the who manages the uh, renewable energy sources and the guarantees of origin. And uh, of course, we couldn't uh, be without the Athens Stock Exchange. And in addition, we have the Cyprus Stock Exchange with a small a percentage of our of our shares and finally one thing that i want to underline we are the only power exchange uh, in uh, the let's say in the eastern europe in the north uh, south uh, east uh, europe uh, that uh, uh, we have the european Union bank of uh, ebrd for reconstruction and development participates uh, as a key shareholder as well now, in this uh, slide, you can basically see the market model that we have adopted for spot and for derivatives. Uh, you can see the, the market, the type, the operator, the clearing and risk management, the platforms and, and the authority that uh, regulates uh, uh, the market itself. And as you can see, for energy, we have two regulators. We have the uh, uh, Regulator for Authority for Energy and the Hellenic Capital Markets Commission, while the RAE is uh, the regulatory authority for the spot uh, markets. Uh, in this slide as well, you can see the unique uh, 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 component at the clearing level for, level for uh, balancing, where this is performed by NX Clear. And also, you see the involvement of Athex Clear, which is the clearing house of uh, the uh, Athens uh, Stock Exchange, uh, uh, because in order to clear derivatives, uh, we have to have uh, uh, a clearing house that is a mirror compliant. Hennex uh, Group is uh, a recent development uh, in, uh, in Greece. Uh, it was uh, long awaited for many years. Uh, there were discussions about uh, setting it up. But finally, it happened in 2018. And uh, right from the start, uh, we chose to be PCR co-owners. So we, we are uh, part of this group of uh, eight uh, uh, power exchanges that uh, basically own uh, the Euphemia uh, algorithm and they operate it on a daily basis. NX Clear was established at the end of 2018, and uh, then I joined the company at uh, uh, late uh, 2019, and that's where all the, the, the developments related to the target model and the new realities uh, in the Greek market uh, have uh, started to take uh, place. We were uh, 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 nominated as NEMO in December 2019. We introduced uh, the forward market uh, in March 2020, we were uh, appointed as a, a registered reporting mechanism by uh, Acer in May 2020. And uh, the big day was uh, uh, end of beginning of November 2020, where uh, the target model was finally in place for our country. And then two also very important deadlines for the, I would say for the regional level is the coupling with Italy in December 2020 and the coupling with uh, Bulgaria in May 2021. And the final development that is just happened a few days ago is uh, the CRIDAS, the complementary regional intraday uh, auctions that were, were successfully uh, realized uh, in the, on the 20th of uh, September 2021. That's uh, a wrong thing here at uh, uh, the slide. So a lot of developments that are taking place and we're progressing very smoothly in all uh, the fronts. 
Now, the main arena, the main trading arena for us is the day ahead market. Where this market can be used for trading hourly, uh, uh, load generation profiles and registration of physically settled futures positions and OTC contracts. It is, of course, a very liquid uh, floor for uh, trading power in the, the short term, uh, I would say by design. And uh, I want to state that it is the main market price discovery mechanism for the short term. Now, the intraday market is uh, where, uh, uh, where uh, adjustments can take uh, place. Uh, at the beginning, we have the local intraday auctions, the leaders, uh, dealing only with uh, the participants of the Greek market. Now we have the Credas and, of course, the Italians, the Slovenes, and other uh, uh, countries uh, participate uh, also, I would say that the intraday market helps the price discovery at the very, very short term. And it's extremely important, especially for RES, because these are exposed to disturbances, fluctuations that relate to weather, and they have to adjust their positions at within, sorry, within a day. And finally, the derivatives, which helps company, companies make long-term plans, formulate business cases, and expand their activities. And it is something that is extremely important for those that are solely suppliers towards consumers or enterprises, because these companies, these suppliers, are, are extremely exposed to fluctuations of the prices at the level of dam. Now, you all know that there are a lot of uh, realities related to the, the, the boom of the energy prices. And we have observed all that in uh, our uh, exchange. You can see the jump between the prices in July and uh, August of 2021. And although the comparison is not something that, uh, that we should take for uh, as one-to-one -one because we compare to a different model last year, the DAS, the day ahead schedule uh, model, you see the tremendous change in the prices. And uh, let me go to the next slide. You can see what was happening in uh, the whole, uh, uh, for one year, from August 2020 until August 2021, you see the steep increase from May. And this increase continues, I would say, even as we entered uh, September. Uh, on the top right uh, slide uh, graph, you can see something that is very important, the contribution of REST to the price. So basically, when you have uh, renewable energy sources that are heavily part of the energy mix, the prices are indeed reduced. So this is an indication that the direction of uh, the government towards the use of REST, the expansion of REST, is an important step forward. And finally, the, at the bottom right uh, graph, you see something that relates very much to the topic of the whole session, basically how prices converge because of the interconnections between different countries. So here you see the connections with Bulgaria and Italy, and you see that prices indeed converge, and they are affected also positively by the coupling that took place uh, last year and this year. Now, Credas was the latest uh, development, uh, and we expect liquidity to increase at the intraday level because of the involvement of the additional players. And uh, soon, for uh, rest players to come, and actively participate at the intraday market because this will be for their own good, for their own expansion. Now, what is the future? What, uh, what do we expect in the next uh, few months uh, or a year? Very soon, the, uh, the island of Crete will be interconnected to the mainland through the, uh, the small cable that runs from uh, Laconia to uh, Crete. Uh, 
it will be done by the end of October, I would say, this interconnection. Then uh, by the end of uh, autumn also, we will have uh, the gas trading platform to be operational. We've heard that gas now is something that plays tremendous role in the setting of the prices. And uh, we hope to get some liquidity related to quantities of uh, gas being traded in our platform. And finally, by the end of 2022, we will introduce the continuous trading at the intraday level. This is also something that has been long awaited and it will help our neighboring countries as well. Now, one final thing concerning uh, the regional level, we are active participants to the SIGAS project, a project that is fully supported by EBRD and it involves all the eastern corridor of uh, running through the Balkans all the way up to, to Ukraine and uh, Poland. And uh, this is a very interesting initiative that uh, I would say uh, promotes the collaboration between the regional uh, power exchanges and uh, uh, identifies potential uh, and let's say cooperation uh, points uh, where we can uh, share market knowledge, uh, promote market access, use common standards, and capitalize on the strength of each particular exchange. We have signed a memo, an MOU with BRM and TGE, and uh, of course, we are in close cooperation with other players. My friend uh, Konstantin uh, from Bulgaria is here and we're discussing many, many opportunities for potential cooperation. So I think that the regional coupling is indeed something very important for all our power exchanges to move forward. And we're looking forward to the developments in that particular area. Thank you very much, uh, George. If I may, I, 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 I yes. really apologize. <laughs> I really apologize for the ugly task okay. of kindly ask you to, 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 to wrap up the presentation, and then we will have uh, probably time to address other um, other issues during the, uh, the the debate after all the presentations. Victor, my, my final slide was thank you. So <laughs> just just we just removed it from the screen, but that's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, George, for, for, for the interesting points, for um, showing uh, actually the, the, the level of alignment between various uh, uh, markets and for sharing with us uh, a couple of words about uh, this very interesting initiative of uh, CBS. Uh, may I now turn to Konstantin Konstantinov, the CEO of uh, IBEX, and kindly ask him to make the introduction. And thank you very much again, George, for sticking to the 10 minutes and uh, the, the same um, uh, the same kind of request applies to, to, to all the speaker. Konstantin, please. Uh, thank you very much, Victor. Actually, <clears throat> oh, sorry, I'll be, I'll be quick uh, and uh, I'd like to show you just a couple of slides as a beginning of our discussion later and hope to have a good line, a good one uh, after this. Uh, let me just uh, share the slides. Uh, I hope that uh, you are able to, to see them in full screen. Uh, so IBEX is uh, the power exchange uh, of uh, Bulgaria. Uh, the company itself is owned uh, by the Bulgarian Stock Exchange. And actually the, the state of Bulgaria through the Ministry of Finance controls the Bulgarian Stock Exchange. So uh, IBEX as a, as a state-owned company is controlled currently uh, by the state of uh, Bulgaria. We are a full member of uh, two uh, associations uh, of uh, power exchanges in the world and European Association of the Energy Exchanges. We are also uh, NIMO, uh, a nominated electricity market operator in Bulgaria uh, by the National Regulatory Authority. We are a full member of a single that had coupling. Uh, this is the former uh, MRC 
and associated member in the price coupling of regions, the PCR consortium. According to these memberships, we are uh, participant in the market coupling projects and are using Eufemia as an algorithm for our clearing prices and clearing volumes on the day ahead. These are our screens that we are running uh, currently. Uh, we have two, uh, three screens with physical delivery and one, uh, one screen for financial products in cooperation with the European Energy Exchange in Leipzig. You can see uh, here some, some data about the DEHET market, uh, bilateral contracts market and the intraday market according to the uh, gold life dates of each of them. Now I, I'd like to, 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 to share my happiness that finally we are in position to see the whole Europe in one and the same color. Uh, this is about the market coupling projects, uh, the, the most important projects that we have done until now is the coupling on the Bulgarian Greek border and we are waiting forward to to make this, uh, this, this project, uh, this project uh, on the Bulgarian-Romanian border also. Currently, I'd like to inform you that uh, the, the testing procedures uh, uh, has been started uh, last week on the 20th of September. Uh, currently, is uh, passing very smooth and I hope that we will be ready with the first uh, go-live session during the last week of uh, October. Uh, here, I'd like to stress on two issues. And uh, Victor, I hope that uh, uh, we'll have the time to discuss them later. The first one is um, this uh, region uh, here, uh, Western to Bulgaria. This is the Western Balkans. And uh, I'll be very glad if we, uh, we discuss the uh, not the coupling, but the integration possibilities uh, of, of this region with uh, the other part of Europe. I'm glad that uh, Milush is uh, here with us because he is the only, he is representing the only country in the region with, uh, with uh, actually working power exchange. The second issue is uh, to discuss the um, opportunity and the possibility to increase the cross-border transmission rights uh, that should be available for trading on the Hungarian, Austrian and uh, Hungarian Slovak borders, because uh, uh, you know that this is uh, some, some kind of barrier, barriers to the energy flow between the Western and the Eastern part of uh, Europe. According to the market coupling with Greece, I'd like to share some information here about the effect of, uh, of this uh, project. Actually, on the graph, uh, the first graph, we can see that the, the transmission capacities are used much more effective. And uh, 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 this is, of course, very good for automatization of the trading process. On the second graph, we can see that uh, this coupling, of course, improves our uh, liquidity uh, a little bit. I hope that uh, next year, when both uh, TSOs, Bulgarian and Greek one, will um, put in operation uh, additional uh, interconnector and the available capacity for trading will be in increased with... Uh, uh, I think uh, almost uh, four or five hundred megawatts. According to the intraday, of course, the market couplings here processes are uh, also very important. Uh, we have um, uh, uh, we have done this on um, Bulgaria Romania border uh, during uh, November two thousand nineteen and the liquidity of, uh, of the local IBEX uh, intraday market jumped a lot. Now we are waiting for um, 
for the first or second quarter of the 2022 when we'll be able to make the coupling on uh, Bulgarian Greek border. These are some details about the um, liquidity and the prices, but of course the, the liquidity is much more important after the, uh, the coupling uh, with, uh, with uh, Romania, you can see that the liquidity jumps a couple of times. Well, what is next, as I, as I mentioned, the coupling on Bulgarian-Romanian border uh, on the day ahead market, the goal life, uh, I believe we will be able to make the first trading session in the coupling month, mode on the 27th of October. This is Wednesday with the delivery date uh, 28th of, of October. Uh, during uh, 2022, we are expecting to complete the second, not second, the fourth wave of local Im implementation project 14 from the XBIC project, I mean the coupling uh, of intraday market on Bulgarian Greek border. And uh, right after that, we'll be ready to introduce uh, 15 minutes uh, um, of uh, uh, a settlement period on the intraday on Bulgarian Romanian border. So thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. I was uh, really fast, but I'm waiting forward to having good discussion after that. I apologize, my microphone was 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 mute just uh, for precautionary reasons, so I come back. Thank you very much, Konstantin, for, for, for this interesting presentation and for bringing up two important things. First of all, uh, the the liquidity aspect, the fact that the liquidity increases with the market coupling, I think this is an important point. And the second, uh, uh, the good news about uh, expanding the market coupling and the tests, uh, the successful tests that you are doing in uh, bringing together the Romanian and Bulgarian market uh, that would consolidate certainly the region. Um, may I now turn to uh, uh, to Mr. Uh, to, to, to Milos, to Milos Mladenovic from CPEX to give us the Western Balkan perspective, although I truly have to say that I don't believe that there is a, certainly a, a disconnect perspective from one market to another. We are all in the same region and I think somehow we are all together. Let's hope that um, uh, sooner or later that would happen also, um, let's say, uh, formally speaking. So, Milos, please. Thank you, Victor. So I will help you help you additionally to struggle with the time because this is always the most demanding task for the chairman. So I will not present any slide, but I prefer to have some, how you say, real words. Uh, and I'm also really glad to be here. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was in person in Thessaloniki together with George, and it was my really great pleasure after, how you say, one or more years to come to Greece once again because I'm regular, how you say, guest of this of this. Uh, uh, conferences, but now unfortunately, situation become worse than in Serbia, so I have to join you online. Um, concerning the CEPEX, I will not go into details because I presented several times, maybe just shortly for those who are not, how I say, fully, fully informed. The CEPEX is established as a joint stock company, as a strategic partnership between the Serbian TSO, EMS, and the EPEX spot. And in fact, uh, that was one of the reasons why we, even in this isolated mode for the five years operation, uh, we reached this certain level of liquidity and this self-sustainability and even break-even point from the financial point of view. Uh, well, very important, uh, I would like to highlight this, not for our colleagues today, but for our colleagues in the Western Balkan, that this more open-minded approach is very important because uh, this strategic partnership with Apex Port on one side and also with European Commodity Clearing on the other side because uh, CEPEX Clearing is also uh, harmonized and in fully included in the, in the ECC Clearing uh, Scheme. They provide us with this possibility to ensure liquidity and to attract foreign players to, to come to trade on, uh, on CEPEX. Uh, so concerning this, how you say, regional context, in fact, that CEPEX from the very beginning was more idea than business case. So 
I was I say, a designer of this, of this uh, bright idea of Southeast European Power Exchange. And in fact, we have established this really open shareholder structure, which is open for all other shareholders from the region. But unfortunately, uh, although I got some uh, support at the beginning from the European Commission, energy community and so on, all other uh, Western Balkan countries, in fact, they, I say some political reasons prevail, economic and business reasons as usual. And now we are facing situations that all of these, how I say, small, small markets intend to establish their own separate uh, power exchanges. Uh, so I'm, I still believe so that in fact there is no any I say future in this fragmentation. So uh, we have this market coupling as uh, George and Constantin mentioned. So this is one one side of the story. And uh, as Constantin said, he said all Europe is green. Unfortunately, this is all EU except Ireland is green, but not whole Europe. And uh, on our side, in fact. Uh, we have been even ready a few, few years ago with, with the coupling. We have started a few market coupling projects with our EU members, so with the Hungaria. Also, we have started trilateral market coupling projects with our uh, Croatian and Bulgarian colleagues. And there is also this so called Alliance project, which is, in fact, uh, maybe not so, uh, how I say, realistic in this moment with Montenegro, Albania, and Italy. So, this is maybe for the mid, mid scale, but unfortunately, uh, as you can see, we are some kind of a black swan here in the region as a non-EU non power exchange. And due to political reason, especially after the, after the CACM guidelines was officially put in, 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 force, in force, so now we, we, we will not be able to, to implement this market coupling. Uh, fortunately, this year we have adopted new energy law and currently we are finalizing CACM by law. So we will... Uh, beside this uh, how I say, initiative on the energy community on the regional level, we will, on the national level, we will uh, implement all CACM guidance provision in our legislation and in our legal and regulatory framework. So I hope that we can restart project with our friends from Hungary, Bulgaria, and Croatia, uh, how I say, maybe uh, even in the last quarter of this year. So I said the market coupling is one side of the story. Another side is uh, some kind of, how you say, strategic cooperation and, uh, and uh, how you say, corporate, uh, corporate merging of power exchanges, merging of businesses. I see that George mentioned that they signed this uh, memorandum of understanding with Polish and Romanian colleagues. We, we have done a very similar story a few years ago with our Hungarian and Slovenian colleagues. And I really, how you say, believe in this, in this future. So I really believe that we have to cooperate, that we have to find some proper framework, how I say, to establish one single regional or even cross-regional marketplace for the, how I say, benefits of the, of the whole community. And maybe one additional very important information regarding the prices George mentioned. So in the past uh, three days, we are facing situation that in CEPEX we have so-called second auction because we set our threshold price on 200 euro per megawatt hour, so we aim that to avoid some mistakes, you know, when you when you put your order, but unfortunately or fortunately on, for some other players, in fact, this is now new reality. So these high prices, even now for the next, for sure, for the next few years. And uh, I would like to, to finalize this first part, maybe to as a teaser for the future discussion. Uh, this on the last conference on Thessaloniki, that was, uh, George also participated, it was more high level political meeting. I heard some new words from the, from the European Commission. So you know that uh, up to now, that was always uh, decarboniz decarbonization, green transition. It was also market opening, market coupling. But now there is some new trendy word and this is affordability. So now we have to think about affordability for the energy. So it is not just a good to be easily to be paid by the final customers. And I think also on the power exchange side, we have to be more open-minded and more progressive as usual to, to try also to implement new, new products on the power exchange. So on our side, we also implemented futures in order together with EX to, to provide all market participants with the hedging purposes. But we have to go even beyond this day ahead intraday market to think about flexibility market, to go maybe also some, how you say, cyberspace to, to see about some digital options and, uh, and so on. So it is obvious that new age is coming and we all have to be ready. 
And as a highlight, of course, it is much better cooperate together and to, how I say, to go together into this, how I say, new reality and the uh, new future. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Milos, for this uh, for this interesting presentation and for highlighting the fact that uh, you are open to business and uh, describing the projects. That actually, I think it's a good testimony that we are integrated more than we think. We go across borders, and I think um, uh, power exchanges really have this role of uh, bringing together uh, the, the synergies and allowing us all to, first of all, to take advantage advantage of them and think about the common future and also I think uh, to, to protect us uh, all of us uh, to a certain extent from uh, various storms including this one uh, related to, 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 to prices. Last but not least uh, let me turn now to Septimio and uh, ask uh, for, for, his, for his views. On, uh, on, on how uh, things uh, evolve in, in the, uh, from from working sense, just to uh, to close this round of uh, presentations. Second, please. Okay. Yes. Hello to everybody again. Hope you see my presentation. I will go uh, as fast as I can. Uh, this is our last uh, year for us. It's uh, we are glad to be here again, at the conference. And uh, in this uh, group of discussion, I will go smoothly uh, through the presentation to um, remind, let's say, some facts about our uh, our business and, of course, some uh, perspectives about the regional cooperation. So, moving on, uh, BRM is a private entity. It has uh, almost uh, 30 years of activity. Uh, focused on the natural gas in the last years, uh, and it's regulated by ARE. Uh, we are the market leader uh, on the gas market. Most, almost all the uh, gas trading uh, exchanges traded on our uh, on our uh, platforms. Uh, yes. For interrupting, uh, can you please share the screen? We cannot see your your uh, PowerPoint. Oh, sorry. Um, no worries. I think you have a share button somewhere in the uh, in, in the bottom of the page. Actually, it was shared, but let me check again. Can or I could, I could ask. Unfortunately, no. Maybe uh, we could ask the, the our colleagues from the technical. Uh, team to, to share the presentation while you speak, maybe? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, actually, it's... Um... Yeah, yes. great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. moving on, as I said, uh, uh, please move to the next slide. Uh, we are uh, we are an exchange uh, uh, acting for almost 30 years. Uh, related to the conference subject, we are uh, focused in the last year on the, on the gas market. Uh, please next. Uh, we are the market leader in this segment, and uh, we uh, we trade almost uh, all uh, all uh, trading uh, activity on the gas uh, exchange. Next, our uh, products are uh, on the gas on the wholesale gas market are uh, let's say rather complete. We have uh, uh, in, in place the spot market a couple of years ago. The balancing market uh, two years ago and the forward market uh, uh, several years ago. And now, uh, since the last year, we have uh, provided clearing services, which are uh, provided by, uh, uh, by our uh, exchange. Next, please. You can see here the products. However, the presentation will be, I believe, available. And I won't insist on them. They are basically uh, common uh, used uh, products uh, in the in the energy field. Uh, now, uh, in the last year, uh, I want to stress maybe that uh, two facts were important. Uh, the innovation uh, service that we provide to our clients and then the future market that we are uh, promoting to be, uh, to be uh, the next one to be developed. Moving further. Okay. Uh, we have uh, almost 100 traders, which are producer and, uh, and suppliers, and uh, more than 200 clients which act on the 
retail market, which is a market with, where we provide, uh, let's say, service to be uh, distributed, I guess, to the institution and the corporation but, uh, by our clients. So we have uh, up to bottom uh, uh, market infrastructure, infrastructure for gas. Next, please. Okay, some facts, as I said before, uh, the innovation last year, which was a success, uh, the future launch in the uh, late uh, 2020. Next. Okay, some facts about the volumes, which are important, maybe in the context of what we discussed as liquidity. Uh, these are the volume of the wholesale gas market. What you see, there is a drop, actually, a drop between 2018 to 2019. And uh, we are catching back uh, year by year. Next slide, please, because I want to say something. Now you can see very small in the bottom, but I will tell you. The idea is that we have already reached around uh, 70 terawatts per year, and it was increasing until the market was, uh, let's say, uh, transformed by the uh, state which uh, regulated the prices and uh, you can see that uh, when uh, when uh, when there is a price intervention uh, the liquidity is dropping as you saw there from 70 terawatts to almost 30 terawatts so we have to put in a balance uh, almost uh, in the context of current days where uh, it's uh, it's an issue of uh, state intervention in prices whether to leave the market uh, open uh, so it's to be noticed that it's impacting the exchange business. Uh, these are uh, details about the retail market that I said before. We can move further. Yes. Uh, what is interesting besides the, the gas or somehow related to it, you can, uh, you can uh, assume uh, the fact that we see a big increase on our other segment of market, which is the EUA. So the emission certificates, almost uh, 7 million uh, certificates were trading on only in the last month, probably and most surely because of the uh, prices that increased exponentially. Okay, we can move uh, further. Next, next, next. What is interesting here is to see that uh, on the blue uh, line in the upper side, you can see the spot markets, which are... Uh, connected to the uh, current realities. However, the forward, we have a lot of trading on the forward market, which allows somehow the consumers not to be affected directly by the uh, big uh, changes in the prices. Uh, uh, so due to the, our current structure of the market, the, still the delivery prices for this period and for the next month are still relatively low for the suppliers to be uh, trans transposed, so let's say, to the consumer. Somehow it's good, but however, the prices will uh, catch up and uh, the, the, in the next uh, trimester will be uh, in the invoices of the, of, the, of the consumer. So this is related to, to what I said before, the intervention of the market, uh, in the market of the state. It may be seen what's going to happen. Also, we are, uh, we are um, servicing for our TSO, the balancing market for a couple of years. Some interesting fact due to the changes in the spot market uh, uh, behavior, uh, the balancing has decreased uh, in the last month, probably because the, the trading players, actors uh, have uh, been more carefully about the imbalances that they generate and the cost related to it. Moving further. Okay, spot market is, we could say, pretty developed around six terawatts, six, seven terawatts last year, around 15% of the market share. However, we see this year an increase in the spot market. We estimate to be doubling this year. Next. Next, please. Okay, interesting about uh, back. Just a second. Uh, clear volumes. Uh, the spot market on our uh, platform is completely cleared by us. So it's 100% clear. I said that we expect an increase in the volumes. However, what we launched last year, the innovation contract seems to be beneficial and it's extraordinary for us that uh, we, are, we, are, we managed to promote this system in, in, to avoid, uh, in order to avoid uh, defaults. We had all, already, I think nowadays, it's already three terawatts to, to transferred to our clearing house and uh, more than 40%, uh, 40 participants active. We can move further. We can move further, please. 
Okay, on the uh, on the other slide before I will tell you, you don't have to go back. Uh, uh, we uh, we are involved in a process of uh, let's say liberalizing the electricity market, which currently is by law uh, under uh, uh, the OCOM. And uh, oh, currently, exactly these days, there is a non ordinance ninth of four, I believe which is transposing the EU directives uh, in order to liberalize the bilateral trading OTC and even the forward trading it remains to be seen what's going to happen with the spot market as a new moment if it will go uh, uh, still uh, under OPCOM. The terminology in the legislation is somehow um, not very clear about the, about the, the obligations. It remains to be seen what uh, ARA will put in the secondary legislation. However, we consider that this is a big step and it was an effort that we contributed. The market will be uh, more competitive. It's good for the international traders. It's good for the market participants. It will be a big change, probably to the sectors of the regional cooperation, this new uh, fact. Moving further. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, of course, you know, it was discussed before that we are open to cooperation. We are extremely keen in uh, cooperating with uh, uh, partners similar to us, exchanges, TSO and uh, traders. Let's move further. Okay, we have even proposed in the, what I am going to say uh, furthermore uh, about the CGS product. We have proposed several times uh, a lot of solution in order to increase cooperation. And then in, in, a, in a technical way and a operative way, not a, just a, in a, in a state uh, of uh, declarations uh, form. So we proposed a lot of uh, solutions like databases, connection access, interconnectivity and stuff like that. And we see changes of our, uh, of our ideas uh, becoming more concrete in the in the environment that we are uh, all uh, moving in, uh, the energy field. Please move further. Okay, we have an OTF also, which uh, we uh, have uh, uh, authorized and we are going to uh, change uh, the uh, way of business. And uh, closing, I think I'm closing to an end. Let's move to the last slides, please. Okay, regional cooperation, it's uh, the cooperation that we have with uh, Henex, uh, and we are happy to be here again, and with uh, Paul Pix, with the uh, Polish Power Exchange. This is a trilateral cooperation since last year. It's a great, we talk, we uh, uh, look to find a solution for, for everybody. And on the bigger, uh, on the upper hand, there is this SIGES uh, product. It was a steering committee 10, year, 10 days ago. And uh, people are signing in the project, uh, a TSO, even the Romanian TSO signed in, and we see uh, working in progress, uh, moving uh, more faster than one year ago. So I think it's great. It's great for everybody, and uh, it will be beneficial for everybody. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Septimio, for, um, uh, for, for this presentation and for highlighting uh, this idea of um, the, the, the prices, the fluctuation, the importance of long-term contracts and the fact that actually markets are contributing to more long-term sustainability of the, of the sector. Since we are speaking about the regional coupling and the role of the exchange, may I uh, just make a, let's say, a tour de table to, to warm up some very short intervention from, uh, from, from each of you, um, uh, talking about I mean, what, what is on your wish list for, uh, for the next year when it comes to uh, regional cooperation? What would you like to see, especially in this context of, uh, of instability? Uh, I, can, I can tell you what I wouldn't like to see in the region, uh, just to, to kick in the discussion. I wouldn't like to see uh, price controls necessarily. I think this uh, price controls and this kind of intervention uh, has a risk for the market and I think it took quite a lot of time to, to build up this, uh, this this market. I think there are more uh, effective ways to, to do this. But uh, may we start in the same order? George, please. Yes, Victor, thanks for, uh, well, 
uh, wish list. Well, I would not say a wish list, but I would say things that I I really expect to happen uh, next year. The first thing is uh, our uh, intraday, the continuous intraday auctions with uh, Italy and with Bulgaria. For us, it's very, very important and something very concrete and something that will indeed support the liquidity of the intraday market. Konstantin shared with us some data about their integration with uh, Romania via XPIT. So this is something that, that will, uh, will uh, let's say, provide some additional force trading power in our intraday market. Number two is I want all our market participants to be more educated concerning hedging because they are still far away from this particular notion. They are not like the banks and the financial institutions that have been used to that particular the tools that relate to hedging for the stock markets. And we see a lack of knowledge on how to use all these tools that are available and not be in the position to beg for a decrease of the price at the dumb level. So we're doing a lot of, uh, let's say, seminars and, uh, and uh, let's say, outreach uh, activities in order to educate them, in order to raise them at a level uh, where they can use all that. And finally, my, my wish list is larger interconnections in terms of capacity, because this will bring more trading power to all the participants, to all the countries, to all the power exchanges. And uh, via the coupling, we have the optimal use of all these interconnections. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, George. Constantine, what is on your list? Thanks, Victor. Of course, I'm completely supporting George's list. Uh, I will not... Uh, uh, repeat this, but uh, definitely exhibit extension and uh, education of our member members is pr pretty important. I'd like to give you one example. I, as I shown in my slides, we have a cooperation for hedging and uh, having uh, uh, financial instruments presenting Bulgarian financial products on EEX. And for example, for we have. Uh, almost 90 active members on our Dehet market. Only almost 10 of them are using this hedging instrument. And uh, that is why the, the huge prices now, as uh, also Milos mentioned, is a big, big problem for the end consumers in Bulgaria. Uh, what about the wish list? Uh, I'll be very happy and I believe that uh, together with my friend Miłusz, we will be able to restart and to make a life our trilateral coupling project between uh, Serbia, Croatia and Bulgaria because this is one very potential project. And of course, I'll be very happy if we manage to do uh, the same coupling initiatives with uh, Northern Macedonia. We are waiting for them to establish their working Dehet platform and uh, uh, with Turkey, why not, actually? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Konstantin. Very interesting uh, uh, wishes. Milos, uh, what is on your mind uh, when it comes to, to, to the future? Yeah. Okay, I, I will sign this wishing list by George and Konstantin on one side. On the other side, uh, we have really exciting, how I say, here future in the in Serbia. Besides this coupling project, we are now. We I hope we will restart their head coupling project and also very soon to to introduce intraday market and start with the X bit. Uh, also, we have a really exciting uh, year to to this year regarding the legal and regulatory changes. So we will introduce new incentive scheme for the renewables. So uh, and there is idea to have these auctions. Uh, premium, double-sided premium CFD contracts uh, with the reference price linked with the CEPEX price. So there will be, of course, some additional boost on the CEPEX liquidity. Of, of course, we are talking about the time frame maybe up to four to five years because this is completely new investments. But this is, for example, one very important feature for the, for the future CEPEX. 
Development and, of course, um, just to mention the current CEPEX liquidity, this is approximately four terawatt-hours, is almost completely without Serbian renewables and uh, uh, without participation of the Serbian, how you say, supply and uh, customer side. In fact, currently CEPEX market is more used as a regional marketplace for the fine tuning of the regional portfolio of our members and also we are uh, used this opportunity to have epic spot on board and we set our gate closure time on 10 15. you know that on all other power exchanges there is a 12 now with the recent market coupling of hungary and now also we are using this so-called how is arbitrage uh, place also for all for all players so as you see we are trying to find our place even via Black Swan, I said a little bit, how I say, uh, put on side from the European Commission. But I'm really looking forward, as, as Constanti said, for the next year. And uh, I, I'm really optimistic about, the, about the all future activities. Thank you very much, Milos. I think uh, your message towards the European Commission was uh, well heard. And uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, mention. Uh, Septimio, uh, back to you now. What is on your wish list? Well, um, first of all, I would like to say, that, as I said, I think uh, the last year when I was at the conference, that I believe that cooperation is uh, has an intrinsic value between the exchanges and the stakeholders in the region, and uh, uh, some of the wish list is uh, starting to fulfill by itself because you see these initiatives that we said about the SIGAS, about the trilateral cooperation, the cooperation that is between. Uh, uh, other exchanges and uh, I think uh, this will provide solution, better solution for the region and uh, one of the ideas uh, in, in supporting, let's say, the SIGAS project is the post trading infrastructure even if it's, let's say, a uh, far, uh, far idea from, from this point of view I believe that at some point uh, um, we will move closer to it in some way or another uh, on the other hand I would like to say that uh, uh, it's not a wish, but I think I believe it's uh, truesome that the fact that uh, state intervention in pricing would not be good, even if it would be to calm somehow the consumer in this uh, follow-up period. Uh, as you see, we have in our country, I think you know better, Victor, the Ordinance 944, in order to change the energy law, which somehow opens the way to uh, regulate the pricing, which I believe is not good. And uh, uh, certainly, even if we are not uh, directly involved in the, say, uh, power interconnection because we are focused on gas uh, and I even if the legislation doesn't uh, 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 forced uh, in our country only to one to be one Nemo uh, probably not in the shorter period will be there however uh, we see opportunities in the gas market uh, because uh, I believe in one month or two the, as the government promised uh, the, the exploration for the for the Black Sea will somehow be open, so the offshore law, which will be a great fact for us and great fact for uh, for all the market because we will uh, we'll open some opportunities considering also you know the current situation. So uh, more or less on the regional level, and this is uh, what I see, and of course on the on the individual level of the exchange, we are developing as much as we can uh, singularly. Thank you very much, and thanks for the mention regarding the, the, the Black Sea and potential new resources of the natural gas in the region. Uh, I think two more minutes to go. Uh, may I go? I, I was looking to see if we have any questions from the audience, but I don't see anyone. Um, I think there is a lot of synergy, uh, and, and you can see, although there are particular various and each market has its own way of doing things and there are differences in development. Still, I think there is a lot of synergy and I think we see each other uh, doing things together and building up a true regional market integrated, even if maybe the speeds are, are not the same, certainly the potential is here. Just before we wrap up, uh, let me just uh, go again on a tour to Tumblr and uh, since, uh, I mean, what would be a, a short message that you want to deliver either to your members or to, to stakeholders in general just before we, uh, we close this session? George, let's start with you. Well, Victor, the, the message is that we are a bulletproof uh, institution that, uh, that takes uh, 
all uh, the necessary steps in order to guarantee that the price signals are there and uh, that there should be trust about our evolution from all the participants without interventions, without uh, price uh, caps, without anything, just the market to work properly and with the institution that can guarantee that. Fantastic. Thank you very much, George, for this message of, of trust and for highlighting this idea that actually uh, power exchanges are bulletproof and actually are the solution when it comes to, 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 to market turmoil. Konstantin, what would you say? Uh, I think you are on mute, Konstantin. You need to... Sorry. Yeah, sorry. In the light of this, and uh, actually we are institution, I have to keep the level of transparency at a very high levels and education of our members and uh, everybody who is participating on these markets. Yeah, thanks. Education is an important point that was mentioned before. Maybe yeah. this is also something that where, where the regional projects can, uh, can help. Uh, Milos, what would be your uh, short message at the end for your members or for the stakeholders in general? Victor, it is not so easy. I'm always the third one. So that George mentioned the trust, uh, <laughs> price disclosure. Constantin mentioned the, the transparency. I would, I would, I would finish just with one teaser. Like you know, like in Hollywood, I would say just blue sky is coming. <laughs> and that's it. So you will. <laughs> I hope that you will hear about this more in details in the following weeks. No, thank you very much, uh, Milos. I think your perspective was really interesting. And I, I, I think uh, uh, the integration of Western Balkan, I mean, somehow we see how this integration uh, uh, should go about. We have seen some positions before, but maybe we would have an opportunity also in the future to discuss more thoroughly about how can we get better together. Um, uh, Septimio, please, your last thought before we close. Well, it's uh, difficult to have a last thought, but um, yeah, exchanges are good. I think we'll see that this next year, it will be better than this year. And uh, yes, they can uh, coexist also with the OPC. I think they compete each other, so it will be good for everybody. Thank you very much, all of you, for, for this very, very interesting discussion. Thank you very much for the message of trust. I'm, I'm sure this is a valuable message for your members, for the market in general for politicians, for all the stakeholders. I truly hope our audience uh, found this panel as interesting as I did. Uh, so thanks again for all your contributions and looking forward to see all of you in the future with the same kind of uh, optimism and uh, determination. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.